I'll begin this just like I do every Saturday. Good morning or good afternoon. Slava Isus Christus. It is 30 years ago, exactly, in 1979. Jim Backman, anybody remember Jim Backman of KFYR? He and a movie producer from California met with a few Ukrainians here in Dickinson. I believe, Larry, you might have been there. I don't know if you remember that. Ben and Ben and Marie, George and Julia Hernanko. They met at our house. This movie producer related that he was interested in doing a film on Ukrainians in North Dakota. He's already done one on Winnipeg, some historic uh, movie there. But he added that he found the people here xenophobic. What the heck is xenophobic? What does it mean? Of course, after some more conversation, I looked it up and it described the people here as being xenophobic, which means they fear the unknown. They resent outsiders. Well, as it happened, Jim Backlund of the KFYR was diagnosed with cancer and that ended that venture. Some of you might remember Jim Backlund receiving treatment uh, on television mm -hmm. he ex allowed himself to be an example. Now that was the first nudge. Somebody is interested in us. We must amount to something. Uh, here is another one. And I'll put this out to you as a challenge. Who said to the Ukrainian community, you will, the church will not save your culture. You must do it. The, that priest, Father, Father Tom Glenn, yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, he was the pastor then of the Ukrainian Catholic uh, churches in Belfield, that area. That set us thinking. We knew we liked our Ukrainian dancers, first recognized, after, re, first reorganized after 45 years of no dance, but we wanted more. We wanted embroidery. We wanted more interest in the foods, the songs, the folk music, the language. And we started calling a meeting, about a years of meeting, and we met in basements of restaurants and basements of the church, planning, promoting, writing bylaws. We hired uh, Tom Byers to do the bylaws. Uh, we went and we approached uh, Romanic, the attorney Romanic in the Washburn to get, get the tax exempt status for us. And then we finally gathered on May 30th, 1980, to sign the memorandum of agreement with Dickinson State University to work through education to preserve, promote, and display the Ukrainian culture. Here we are, 30 years later. What, in your opinion, is the most important accomplishment for UCI in those 30 years? Anybody want to venture? What do you think was the most important accomplishment in those 30 years? We, did we save the culture? I expected everybody to say yes. 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 <laughs> okay, wake up, people. <laughs> the first, the first. So after signing, it was even before we signed a memorandum of agreement with Dr. Wittrell, we had a Pisanka show at the college, and uh, we had like 48 Pisanka, none of them for sale yet, because uh, this was a new venture. Uh, we set up this show at at the university. That was Mrs. Abeltoff, what I don't remember her first name. Gail. Gail. Gail and, and I set it up. We stood back to look at them. We admired them. All of a sudden one shelf collapsed. Oh on no. On top of another one. And on whose Easter eggs did it fall? It fell on Betty Black. It was the best Easter eggs we had there. That weekend I said, Well, I'll see Betty in church, I'll have to tell her. It was a miserable time until it, the time came. I worried, how am I going to tell her that we broke, I think, with about three of our nicest eggs. And so when I told Betty that we broke her eggs, she said, it's all in the game. Can you imagine my relief? She's the part of the job. You're working with a fragile object, it's going to break. And so to this day, I hold Betty in such very large esteem for setting my conscience at ease. I guess the next thing that we did was Marusha's Ukrainian Way. Uh, the music department from the University of North Dakota came 
to Dickinson looking to do ethnic music traditions. And they went to the various ethnic groups and they came to us. And right at that time, somebody was having a, a wedding at the Eagles. So I said, okay, I'll take, I'll take the teacher with me to this wedding. Let her experience it. She loved it. And uh, we proceeded. And I guess that's how you got into the Hall of Fame, Julia. She was a bride four or five times her saying on stage. It was a phenomenal week. If you, if those of you who were there in far in Grand Forest for that first performance, we finished and the crowd just came forward to congratulate us. Just phenomenal. After that, we had four more engagements. We presented it here at Dickinson State. We went to the door and did it on stage there. I don't even remember where else it was. St. Demetrius. St. Demetrius on the church grounds there was, it was no, very, very wonderful. Side. Another thing that followed after that was the Ukrainian Symposium. We were trying to get ourselves to understand why our people came here. Uh, we were able to get speakers like uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Kapusta. Who, and Mr. Kapusta was originally from Minot, but he was working in the State Department. At one time, he was even an ambassador to Afghanistan. Uh, he represented the people in that region, in the Minot region. Uh, we got Mr. Shindera, who had come here to do a special program. He, he was working for the Voice of America, and he said that uh, he called and he says, well, we cooperate with him if he comes here to do some interviews to be sent to Ukraine. Of course, that was still the communist time. And uh, what was happening was that the communists, Russia, had sent agents here to, uh, to the United States they photographed old abandoned buildings. They showed them on television in Russia and said, this is the Ukrainian farmery in, in the United States. They were trying to counteract that. So they came here and sent a, a representative here. And we had him interview George and Julia Hernanko, and I think Bill Straponi, and I don't know what else. Anyway, so, uh, so that, that uh, symposium also celebrated the 50th anniversary of Father Michael Babersky. He was also one of the speakers. When he retired, he retired in, I think, like November, December. Nobody gave him a farewell. And so this served. It was, it was such an attractive banquet for him that they, uh, they, uh, there were like 200 pe people at the, at the dining room table in the, at the Hastings. That evening, St. Vladimir's College Choir sang, uh, sang at a concert and danced. Also at that affair, we instituted the first North Dakota Ukrainian Hall of Fame induction. And the three people that were honored, Father Bobirsky, Dr. Uh, Hordinsky, and Terneki, were all admitted to the first Hall of Fame. One of the other things, the early things that we did was to interview immigrants. We were able to get a grant from the North Dakota Humanities Council and Dickinson State University Foundation gave us several thousand dollars. And uh, we interviewed immigrants. They were still immigrants in 1980. And we traveled to Wilton. We interviewed people there. We found some in Bismarck. We went to Butte and Keith, North Dakota. You know, I, I so wanted to know about the Ukrainians in Keith. But how can I ever get acquainted with those people in, in, in Keith and Butte, North Dakota, knowing that they were uh, evangelical Baptists? I thought that if I go to Butte, North Dakota, and I go to a bar, and I sit down there, I will meet somebody that is Ukrainian. I didn't know they didn't drink. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but we interviewed them, and we had them all on, you know, on tape, and we had hired someone to transcribe them into words. And, and after that, we used the interviews to write a program called The Voices of the Ukrainian Immigrants. How many of you were in it? You were in it. Raise your hand if you were part of that Voices. We, uh, we presented it first at the festival. And after that, we did it at the Business State University. We were invited in Bismarck and the Heritage uh, Center. To, to present it. It took about 19 people, I think, there, and was in the who's not here. Around the corner. Yeah, you were in it once, right, Jeff? Yes, 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 I was. Actually, we presented it 14 times. What a phenomenal success that was. Yeah, we presented it 14 times. What a phenomenal success that was. And then we printed a booklet, Ukrainians in North Dakota. 
We wrote the history of uh, Ukrainians in North Dakota by taking excerpts out of that uh, of those interviews. Remember people's Rama? Yeah, I was born in Ukraine, Trukch, and that was where I was born. Across the river, that was Russia, but that was Ukraine. He, Russia took it, you know, he, he, Roy, you were Mr. Pusrava, weren't right, you? Yes. He. I hope I did him justice. <laughs> May he rest in peace. Those interviews were then transcribed from the CDs and from the cassettes into words, and, the tra and were transcribed to, were transferred to CDs. Bill, thank you for doing that. All that, all those, you know, because cassette, cassettes stretch and they tear. But a CD keeps it forever, and uh, and we made we gave copies of it to the North Dakota Heritage Center. So if you ever go to the Heritage Center and request to see it, then uh, they they are on file there. Another big thing that started coming along was the Ukrainian festival. The first three were held in the Dora, North Dakota. It was good because you had a ready-made audience. There's travelers there but we did not build foundation over there. We also had to haul everything over there in pickups and trucks and cars and, and so on. So, um, and I don't think Medora really liked us. I think they were more leaning towards what they were about the foundation. We did not feel a welcome over there. We decided to try Dickinson and we, in 1989, we came to Dickinson did the first several festivals at Trinity High School and then moved into our own area. Uh, when we had the Ukrainian festival, then we would take the dancers and the singers and travel on to Butte, North Dakota, and Wilton, North Dakota, and Keith, North Dakota, and uh, we did, uh, we did fest parts of the festival over there. I have to tell you something that happened just last summer. Uh, Keith, North Dakota was celebrating its 100th anniversary. And they called uh, called us and says, can you do, they knew we had the program once before, can you do the program that gives the history of this area? And if you want to know what it's about, uh, go to your w website, they gave us a website to go to, and uh, you, will, you will see the advertisement part. When I opened up the website, they talked about them being Russians. So I sent back an email and I said, you don't want us. We're Ukrainians. You've got to find the Russians. They came back and they all changed to Ukrainians. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we did the voices of, of, of the Kiev region. And we, uh, we reached out all over the country. They helped me find people that, that were the children of the immigrants. And we found, I think, like 12 of them. And they were professional people, doctors. Uh, physician um, well anyway they were they were professional people we did not have a rehearsal I sent them the script they prepared we got on the on the stage they had four microphones we were really special for that day and there were lots and lots of people some of you were there Marie you were there you remember that and you you were there mm. um, and uh, first thing we did we had them introduce themselves and each one, each one would get up from the stage and he would say, uh, my name is uh, Mr. Pritsky. I am a Ukrainian. Those people, that was a day that I cried. <laughs> I won't cry today, but that, that one, once Ukraine became independent, they looked at the maps and saw that they were not Russians, they were Ukrainians. And so that was a very great achievement for us. Um, with the raffle, we also did an embroidered quilt. It did more than just become a first prize for, for, for the festival. It was an opportunity with a little piece to learn to embroider. And that's how we expanded embroidery in this area. And now they're continuing. Uh, there's about a dozen, well, no, not a dozen, maybe about 10 people that embroidered this quilt year after year. Uh, something else that we did very early as soon as we started the festival, we did the Ukrainian summer workshop. And as you know, that continues. It's under, it's been reorganized by, uh, not reorganized, but taken over by North Dakota and Duda. 
North Dakota Ukrainian Dance Association. And they too continued this, uh, this workshop. If any of you read the article in this latest issue of the, of the Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian newspaper, newspaper uh, you read about each of the classes that, that we went to and found the very best teachers we could get. I was so impressed with, with those teachers. Uh, after college, we also were able to have several classes. Uh, we had the history of Ukraine talk through the college that Yaroslav Shkendera came. He was also the symposium speaker. We taught the Ukrainian language for two semesters. I think the product of that is Emil Avril and, uh, and Lori Viserano. Took it for two years. Teresa, I think you learned the alphabet. Who's Teresa? She's getting dinner ready. Uh, sometimes we would have a class for the seniors and they would have such a good time. They were really recalled that, that they would talk, they would have somebody of their generation to speak to. And of course you heard something about the Pirohim machines. When we were getting ready for the festival, we had to make the Pirohim by hand. 10 to 15,000 of those little buttons that you had to finish. And then freeze them, and then pack them, and then haul them over. So it, it seemed to me that every time the, we older people rolled out the dough, we would say, if only, if only there was a machine. And then all of a sudden, there was one advertised in the Ukrainian Weekly. We took it to the community. Shall we look into it? We said, somebody go, go there and take a look at it. It was in December. I. Uh, when I arrived in Toronto, there was about that much snow on the, on the street, but somehow a guy made it, picked me up, gave me a demonstration of how the machine works. Uh, I couldn't bring any pet of hair over here because it was crossing the border, but it was just on my judgment. Came back to the community. We met at Mike Brown from Mike and Betty's house. I gave him my report, the pictures of the work we had. They talked about it. They knew that they were giving up something when they were not doing it together as a group because it was always fun. We got together. We had a wonderful meal. Uh, we sang songs. We were going to be giving this up. But then on the other hand, we would be making better hair and, uh, and not working as hard as we were. So they uh, voted to the majority says, let's go for it. I says, how do we pay for it? We didn't have any money in UCI. He says, let's, let's all donate. And through approximately $7,000 that they donated, we were able to buy the machine. And of course, the beginnings are always hard. You don't know the machine. The, the man came uh, to give us a demonstration. We, uh, you know, you watch and you think you know. Luckily, we had some people. Ben was there. Ben Macrick was there. My brother Emil was there. Mr. Kritsky was there. So between them, they remembered how to uh, but, but for about three months, we practiced. And if you remember Marion Wiener, the first, mm -hmm. the first, our first person to, uh, uh, to operate that machine, we would, she would stand on her, little, on her little box because she was not tall enough to reach the top. And she would hold up some money and she would say, Lord, $5 in a, in a, for the church this Sunday, but help us succeed. And uh, through through much practice, we were able to succeed and uh, get our first market, which was a uh, dance supermarket here in Dickinson. And then we were able to secure Bismarck dance supermarkets, all three of them. And the rest is pretty much history. Of course, being, uh, being in that five-room complex that we were on 20, 22nd Street, yeah. We knew that it was getting too tight for us. We were using an upright uh, freezer, putting them in there, and getting them out, and very, very tight quarters that we decided to start looking for a building. I don't exactly remember how this building came into being, but it was empty. And we looked at it, and you had to have vision in order to avoid it. It was abandoned as a restaurant. Uh, mess, burnt up stuff, 
but our our board of directors had the vision to look and uh, and to remodel and to throw out a lot of stuff. We worked real hard to uh, clean up a refrigerator. It was working fine. We were cleaning it up, cleaned it up, plugged it in, blew out. The stoves, there were stoves left with all the crumbs and I think crumbs all over and meisters. So, uh, so it was in 1992 that we moved in here and uh, we did it through, uh, we bought it through a capital campaign drive. And through the capital campaign drive, we were able to raise enough money, I think we had, what was 110,000? Uh, we had, um, we still had $35,000 left to pay on it. It was a 10 year contract. And I think we want to borrow the money from the office where we came from, that's where our friends were. Uh, I wanted so badly to finish it up and pay it off and and uh, and be through with the, with, with the payments each year because there was always interest. And uh, one day we got a letter on, the, on, I looked at it from Julia Hernanko and I thought, oh, Julia always remembers students that she taught that they passed away that she would always give a memorial. So I left the, de the letter on my desk for a while and uh, thinking that it was maybe a $15 check for a memorial. When I finally got to it that later, later that day, I think it was, I opened it up and it was a check for $35,000. <laughs> I didn't know where to run. I didn't know, who, there was nobody to tell except the people in the kitchen. So they all had to listen to about this excitement that we were finally paying off this, uh, this building. Uh, we had another very interesting experience with George and Julia. A uh, uh, film producer by the name Slavko Nowitzki. He is, he is now in Washington, D.C. He was filming film, a, a film on the, on the Ukrainians in the United States. And he somehow learned about us and he, he came here with his writer and his uh, big cameras and three of them in all and wanted us to cooperate with him to do the film on, uh, on the Ukrainians in, uh, in the United States. And uh, we got <laughs> Pete Basaraba to, to cooperate and there was people in Wilton that cooperated. Uh, he went over to the Dimyanyo house. Bill, you were in it too. That's where you made your debut, I believe. Remember your famous words there? You won't tell us, huh? <laughs> uh, it was a really windy day, wasn't it? And the clouds were so billowy, and, and he filmed on the on the farm that we had, which was that Gregory's place. So that uh, that is in the in that film. Uh, the narrator. Anybody you remember who the narrator was for that film? Jack Palance, the movie star. And the film was sponsored by the Ukrainian National Association, and we have a copy of it here if any of you are ever interested in seeing it. Another very, very big surprise came. Uh, I don't exactly remember the year, but uh, well, we used to I used to correspond with a lady in in uh, Denver who was an author. She was a writer of books. I remember her aunt America books she took, gave insights on how the communists work and how they, how they disturb the church services. And uh, we, we sent her a newsletter each time and when I was going to Ukraine she asked me to explore some, some places that were supposed to show some uh, dissolution. And, um, and uh, Mrs. her name was Marie Halloon Block. She, as she aged, she moved to, her, to live with her daughter in Cambridge, Massachusetts. We continued to send her the paper, and then she passed away, and that was the end of our our association. But like seven months later, we get a telephone call from her daughter. Her daughter tells us that I was looking through mother's things, and I found your newsletter. And I think mother would like it if we gave her library to Ukrainian Culture Institute.
Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you next week. Do pobaczenia.